being business to build and alter viruses. Um, uh, that chain is called um, can be passed around to many cyber criminals, like an assembly line called crowdsourcing. And with this um, assembly line style, that's um, they're more prone for only like one or two people to get caught, whereas there's like tw like ten to twenty of them working on it, so not everybody goes down. Um, but what it is, someone writes an original virus code and either sells it or passes it to an accomplice. Then the accomplice adds more functions, like the ability to shut down a computer, freeze it, steal info, cover up its tracks, etc. And then it gets passed along the line, eventually becomes something like the panda virus, and then <coughs> send it out. And if one person gets caught, then the rest get off free. <clears throat> this uh, picture up here is what Patrick was talking about. When um, your computer gets taken over, the icon becomes that little panda, inc <clears throat> panda incense burn. And uh, also, you see the graph down there, um, the China and China and the US are some of the most uh, countries that have malware, which is a virus. So they're both prone for hacking. Um, along with uh, China and US, uh, China's hackers don't fit the Hollywood stereotype. They're more, um, they're not like geeky nerds in uh, basements as American hackers would be. Or um, uh, like Russian mobsters who build their um, viruses from the ground up. They're just like um, she said, script kitties. A lot of them are that just try to hack into anything and just try to cause havoc. And that's it. Questions? The question team had questions. Yeah, okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> right here. Uh, so I know this is going to affect the United States a little bit because we train a lot. But what do you think? And 